Hi folks, Jake Von Slat here. In front of me, two hurricane lanterns. One is burning kerosene, the other uses an LED bulb and a flicker circuit that I built. Can you tell which is which? This video is going to be about building that flicker circuit, and at the end of it, I will reveal the answer. When I was quite young, I went to Disney World with my parents, and while I enjoyed the park very much, one of the things that just seized my imagination was this tree. It was in the waiting area for Splash Mountain and it was festooned with with lanterns and they uh, had incandescent bulbs in them but they flickered like real flames like real kerosene lanterns and and I was fascinated by that. I thought it was a, just a really wonderful effect. Many years later I actually managed to track down the module that Disney used to flicker those incandescent lights and unfortunately those modules were $125 each and while I wanted very much to replicate that uh, uh, lantern installation on the trees in my front yard I was, was not going to spend $125 per lantern uh, and I did not like the idea of all the lanterns flickering together. So initially I hung the lanterns using little flicker LEDs in each lantern and while that worked they were very dim and it really wasn't quite the effect that I wanted. And then sometime later I was uh, flipping through my RSS feed and I saw a blog post from Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories. Uh, they're a seller of components and one of the things they sell are these little flicker LEDs, in fact the same ones that I had bought for the lanterns. And they had been experimenting with them and uh, doing things like putting a speaker with an amplifying transistor in line with the, the flicker LED and turning the uh, modulation of the flickers into an audio signal. Uh, but what really caught my eye was a schematic that showed the uh, varying current draw of the flicker LED controlling a much larger, brighter LED and that is exactly what I wanted for my lanterns. Uh, so I uh, adapted the circuit a little bit of some slight changes. We'll go over that uh, during the build process. Um, basically the flicker LED uh, makes the, the makes too strong a flicker for what I wanted uh, and by slightly changing the way the resistor was in the circuit I was able to damp that down to the point where as you can see they're almost identical. So let's get to work. Before we begin with the construction details uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the circuit. If you'll notice these two are flickering at quite different rates. Now, uh, both have exactly the same components, but the, the wiring is a little bit different. In the original schematic from Evil Mad Scientist Lab, uh, you can see the uh, flickering LED is simply uh, on the base of the transistor and tied to ground. What I found is that that made for flickering that was excessive. It didn't look like a kerosene flame. It looked like a guttering candle, which wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted something uh, uh, more subtle. So what I've done to smooth that out is I've taken a uh, 1K ohm resistor and I have just put it across the legs and now we're getting about the same flicker out of each of the two lights. So what this tells you is that by changing the value of the of this resistor you can change the uh, the rate of flicker and the the higher you go um, the more flicker you have so uh, 1k seems to work uh, quite nicely for the effect that I want uh, this is a 3.3k resistor so let's put it in to the circuit and you can see we get less flicker than we got before but still quite a bit more flicker than this uh, light. Um, what I like to do when I'm doing a, a series of lanterns is I'll use different values of resistors in different lanterns uh, so that they will flicker at different strengths and that makes it look more natural. 
So let's go ahead and get to the uh, actual construction details. So we'll need our big bulb, our flicker LED, a 3906 transistor, 470 ohm resistor, and in this case I'm using a 2.2K resistor. So this will make it flicker a little bit more than the 1K, but it should still be uh, a fairly subtle flicker. Short piece of Teflon tubing and a pin that I'm going to pull out of this header. Alrighty. I'm going to use this clamp to hold the uh, bulb while we work on it. So let's get it oriented correctly. So this is our positive, this is our negative. We can just verify that. Yep. Okie doke. So step one is we want our transistor right about there with the emitter connected to the negative. So I am going to make a loop. Cut that off here, and then I'm going to cut the base right about there. Then I'll, I'll push the uh, collector a little bit out to the side to get it out of the way. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you. Okay, so we're going to hook our emitter onto the negative and I'm going to squeeze that little loop closed solder that in place and while I'm here I'm going to tin the base now I'm going to take our 470 ohm uh, resistor and I'm going to cut it off right about there and I'm just gonna stick it into the material of the bulb that's gonna let me it's gonna hold it still while I tin the end and now I'm gonna take that and I am gonna solder it to the base just like that and now I'll hold that with my tweezers and bend it over because we need it to go over that direction at this point I'm going to take that pin that I pulled out of the header earlier and I'm going to stick it into the bulb right about there And I'm going to cut off the uh, negative connector because we will not be using that. And now I'm going to bend the collector over. Actually, I'm going to pull this pin out and stick it back in the collector on the other side of it. like that and then I'll bend this back around our next component is that 2.2k resistor make a hook in one side just like I did before nip that off I have one more wire to attach here, but I'm going to solder this in place just to make that process a little easier.
Both of these resistors connect to the anode of the flicker LED. So I'm just going to bend them over and cut them off. Loop both of them up like this. You can tell the anode because it's the longer of the two leads on the flicker LED. And I'm going to leave a little length on this because I'm going to bend the LED over this direction to try to keep it, everything within the footprint of the bulb. Now I'm going to take my piece of Teflon, slide it onto this lead, bend my LED into place, this the cathode of the flicker LED goes to our negative. So we'll off our X anode, cut off excess X wire, cath wire, excess cathode one we'll solder we'll joint and for our final and we're working now we should have click light. So I made five of these today with different value resistors. So the lower the value of the resistor across the flicker bulb, the less flicker you get. So I believe this one is 4.7K. This one is 3.3K. And I think these two are 2.2K and this is a 1K, but I'm not sure. These seem quite similar though perhaps the second one is a little calmer than the other ones and you can see all together these are pulling just about a hundred milliamps uh, normally one of these bulbs uh, in full brightness mode draws a little over 200 milliamps uh, so we're you know we're only running these one-tenth of uh, their their rated current which is good because that gives us a bulb brightness that is pretty close to the brightness of the flame of a kerosene lamp. So as I mentioned before, the color temperature of these bulbs isn't quite right by themselves and that's what this uh, theatrical gel uh, uh, color correcting film is for. Uh, I will put links to this stuff as well as all of the other components uh, down in the comments. So, you want to cut a strip that's big enough long enough so wide enough to cover the LED portion and long enough to wrap around the bulb two times and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this I'm gonna heat this till it's nice and soft I'm gonna wrap it around the bulb and then I'm gonna put a little piece of Kynar tape on it to hold it in place while it cools
And the final step is to put a couple of uh, pieces of heat shrink over the two pins, bottom of our bulb. Pinch them closed. And then dip the whole base in flex seal as seen on TV. And there we go. There is our weatherproof bulb. Now once this dries we'll be able to just pop those pieces of uh, heat shrink off and um, expose the pins. Here's the finished bulb. With the bottom sealed with the flex seal and the uh, color correcting film. Now I'm going to install it in this lamp. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to drill it out a little bit, and I'll be using one of these uh, uni bits. Uh, the advantage of these is uh, they don't grab like a regular twist drill. So for making unusually shaped holes round, they're particularly good. They're also particularly good for uh, making holes larger because they're self-centering. Okay, that is about perfect. And now the moment you've been waiting for. Which one is kerosene and which one is electricity? So you can see they're about equal brightness. One is slightly higher color temperature than the other. They both flicker about the same. So uh, without further ado, that was kerosene. And this one, electricity.